This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and here it is, the iPad Live in Large. This is the iPad Pro, Apple's biggest and most expensive iPad yet. 12.9-inch display, fairly thin and light. It's 1.6 pounds, which for a tablet of this size, that's pretty reasonable. Not cheap. It starts at $799, call it $800 for the 32-gig model. And Apple's full of contradictions. Now they think touchscreen devices can replace your laptop, so it's meant to really be sold with the optional keyboard and pencil. But at release, you can go buy one of these iPads, but you can't buy the pencil. You can't buy Apple's own keyboard case dock thingy that they sell for this. So <laughs> that's a little bit of a canoodle. And we're not in the rarefied small group of people that got one of these from Apple, so we don't have the pencil. We don't have the Apple keyboard in for review, so it's gonna be just like the experience you have. You can just get the tablet. Have the Logitech keyboard case, which is actually a better product, and you can buy that, so we'll be, be covering that instead, and I think really you should be buying this instead of Apple's own keyboard cover. Anyway, we're gonna look at it all now. So here it is, the iPad Pro, 12.9 inches full of iOS goodness. If you're an iOS fan and you think bigger is better, well, I suppose this is the product for you. It certainly is large. This is about as big as the Surface Book tablet section, and it weighs about the same too, 1.6 pounds. So we're talking large here, although it is thinner because it doesn't have to have a full PC inside. We have the Apple A9X. CPU, which is a very capable CPU, but it's a mobile-oriented CPU instead of a laptop kind of CPU. It's not the sort of CPU Apple would put in a MacBook Air or Pro, for example. Four gigs of RAM in here, which is the most ever for an iOS device, and you can get it with 32 or 128 gigs of internal storage. As usual, no micro SD card slot, no thumb drive support, anything like that, so you should get the storage that you need. The 32 gig with Wi-Fi only is $799, and the 128 gig is $150 more. It's $949. Call it $950. If you want the one with LTE 4G plus Wi-Fi also, that's available only with 128 gigs of storage, and that one is $1079. So these are not inexpensive products. You can get a really nice, pretty high-end Ultrabook for the price. You can get a Microsoft Surface Pro 4. Even, you know, going up to the Core i5 maybe, because when you accessorize this out, the pencil, world's most expensive pencil, the pencil is $99. So you get a $100 pencil you got to buy for this if you want to use it. And now some of you may not want to do that. You don't want to draw, you don't want to handwrite notes, whatever, you can leave that out. Then there's the keyboard, which Apple is pushing really as a complete package using this with the pencil and the keyboard. Apple's keyboard case is $169. The pencil and the keyboard are actually not available at launch. You can go buy an iPad today. You cannot buy the pencil or the keyboard case. Those are pushed out to four to six weeks, I think it says on Apple's site right now, and the stores don't seem to have any inventory, which really is a shame because, again, the whole idea with this is it's not just that it's a big iPad. It's an iPad that you can convert into something like a laptop or a digital drawing and note-taking screen, all of that good stuff. We do, however, have the Logitech keyboard case, which I would recommend as being even better. Apple's keyboard case is it's sort of like the Surface Touch Cover, if you remember that. It's got a fabric coating on it, and it's not exactly a capacitive keyboard, but you know, you've got the little raised keys a little bit, but it's a fabric-covered keyboard, not hugely tactile, and there are no iOS shortcut buttons or anything like that, no volume controls on the keyboard, and it's only, it only tilts at only one, one position, about 120 degrees. Now, the Logitech keyboard case will show you. We'll take a look at that. also has... Uh, one position really and that's because it connects to the again this is like what Microsoft did this is a magnetic data connector right here these three little pins so it's not using Bluetooth or any form of wireless it's actually a physical connection to the keyboard case accessories and that's open obviously to third party so Logitech can make them anybody can make them the pencil however is not open to third party so we're just gonna have to wait for Apple to cough up those darned pencils so how big is this guy? Well, we have three sizes here, so you can get the idea. Here is the iPad Air 2. I mean, they're all darn skinny, and the iPad Pro is just about as skinny, which is pretty impressive. So if you are using this as a laptop replacement, the iPad Air 2 with a keyboard case, you can see how much more screen real estate you're getting, but also how much more you're going to have to maneuver around and fit in your bag. It, it certainly is about the footprint of a Ultrabook the iPad Pro. And lastly, we have the little iPad mini on top. So there you go, three sizes of iPad.
There's one for everybody, I suppose. And now for another size comparison, now obviously we, we have the Surface Book here. This is a much more expensive item. It starts at $1,500. So if you thought the iPad Pro was expensive, well, Surface Book is even more expensive. But it obviously is a full laptop and is a 13.5 inch display and a detachable display which we're going to detach right now just so we can compare these two as tablets. So, snide comment right here, the pen is included with your Surface Book and also with your Surface Pro 4, so no worrying about finding that pen later. In terms of size, these are just about the same size. Though the Surface Book does have a 13.5 inch display versus a 12.9 inch on the Apple, you can see the footprint there is nearly identical. Also, they weigh about the same, 1.6 pounds. That is when the Surface Book is used as a tablet only. Surface Book is going to be thicker, though. You've got Core i5, Core i7 CPUs in here, full PC hardware, fans. You know, the iPad is going to be silent. It has no fans, for example. Different products for different people. If you need all that a PC can do, obviously you want to think about something that does have a full PC inside. If you're happy with those mobile apps, you don't want to have to worry about all the maintenance and the overhead that's involved in using a PC, Mac or win Windows, whichever it is that you're talking about, well, then iPads for you. And to compare it with Surface Pro 4, we have right here with the optional type cover not included, just like Apple doesn't come with a keyboard either, but once again, you do get the pen. Sorry, just have to say that. Take that off. This has a kickstand. Apple does not do kickstands. And there's the size difference for you right there. So 12.3 inch display on the Surface Pro 4. And it too will be thicker. In fact, it's the thickest of all. And unless you get the Core M on the Surface, you will have a fan, which you will hear now and again, depending on what you're doing. Again, full PC, you can play Steam games, all that sort of thing, full Adobe Photoshop, full Adobe Premiere, but not a mobile OS product. Also, battery life is different. If you guys need comparisons between these, I'll be happy to oblige. Just put that in the comments. Ask for it. So where the iPad Pro excels is the fact that you obviously have more screen real estate here. Resolution is 2732 by 2048. Boy, the days of easy to remember resolutions surely are gone these days with these products. 264 PPI and the usual IPS laminated display that Apple uses, so-called retina quality. That would be 5.5 megapixels or so worth of display goodness. So, you know, you can do this with an iPad Air and an iPad Air 2. You can do the side-by-side -side kind of thing for multitasking, but it's all a little bit small. Obviously, it's easier on the eyes here. It's nice and big, and it's pretty good. So one thing about the multitasking, which is pretty neat, you pull in from the side right here, and you can get to all of your apps. But... Not every app installed is going to be supported over here. All of Apple's apps pretty much are. So you can bring up mail, you can bring up Apple Max messages, email, numbers, pages, which is the iOS Office compatible suite. You can't have two instances of Safari, though, for example. So if you want to have two web browsing windows side by side, no can do. You're going to have to use the tab feature on the browser instead. So a little bit different from, say, a Mac or a Windows PC insofar as you can only have something side by side there. But it is a nice touch and it is pleasant with the big screen. Otherwise, the screen real estate is going to be up to the applications in part to make use of that added screen real estate. It's sort of like when we went to retina displays, the higher resolution displays, developers are going to have to support that. And just right here, I would love to see these icons closer together. It's just so much wasted space. But how fast developers will support this. It'll be interesting to see, given that this is more of an expensive and niche product, I'm not sure they're going to race to do it just as quick as they did when we had the first Retina iPhones coming out. Now, there are instances when Apple does support the high-resolution display right here nicely. So here we are in iMovie. So you've got room for your timeline. You've got your, your full 1080p preview right over here and the usual functions on the sides. So. And this is flawlessly fast. Honestly, this is the fastest product Apple has made yet in a mobile device. So it can handle 1080p editing. It can even handle the 4K footage from the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus, which is pretty good because a MacBook Air has trouble doing that. Better optimization of the software here. It's not that this is so much faster than a MacBook Air. It's really about the software optimization for it. 
And so you can hear the speakers, which are frankly quite good. There are four speakers on this. Sound quality is really very nice for a tablet, for a tablet this size. Uh, we're in the YouTube app, and we'll play one of our videos so that you can hear it. And you can see, again, it would be nice if uh, Google updated the YouTube app for support because we have a whole lot of wasted white space here. But let's look at our Surface Book versus Surface Pro 4 comparison. It's so full and rich sounding. It looks very nice. This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and you knew this one was coming. As promised, this is the comparison or smackdown between the new Microsoft Surface Book right here and the Microsoft. Notice those last three notches of volume really make it loud. It doesn't. It's not that loud until those last three notches, but it will get loud without distorting. Needs best, so it's not to say that one is gloriously bad. The screen is certainly lovely. This is a fantastic movie and photo consumption device for those of you who want to proof photos, for example, professional photographers, and then use the elusive pencil maybe to edit instead of having to use your finger and block your view or use a capacitive stylus. This would be a pretty nice device to do that, thanks to the big screen and the high resolution. Now for performance from the Apple A9X CPU, I can't wait till this makes it into the iPad Air too. Honestly, look at the scores on that. Now Geekbench is not always the most accurate. It's a cross-platform benchmark where it runs in just about everything. And sometimes the numbers don't quite make sense, but right here is showing numbers that would look like a Core i5. Really computationally speaking, I don't believe this is equivalent to a Core i5, but nonetheless, this is faster than anything Apple has ever put out before. And like I said, it's really hard to make this guy lag. And we'll switch back over and take a look at our other benchmark, which would be 3D Mark. For the iStorm Unlimited Test, 33,353. Again, an all time best for an Apple mobile OS product. And also, right up there, it has some comparisons right here. And it does about as well as the Microsoft Surface Pro 3 with a Core i3, the lowest end from the last generation of Surface Pro. So, Pretty neat stuff. Of course, you're not going to be able to run the same applications on those, but you get the idea. A few apps have already been updated to support Pencil. For example, OneNote does, Apple's Notes do, and you get you do get palm rejection. I have demoed the Pencil. I wish I could show it to you here. And latency is good. Tracking is very nice on it. Hopefully, someday soon we'll get the Pencil in so we can demo that. But we're going to show you the keyboard next. So now we have it in the Logitech keyboard case, which actually is available now, and it's available in a couple of different colors. Obviously, this one would be best with the gold model. You can get the iPad Pro in space gray, silver, or gold. And the Logitech case is also available with the light silver cover with the black on the back. You get the idea. There's a couple of different ones. $150. Nice keyboard. Actual real moving clicky keys. They feel pretty decent. Now, this is not exactly the, exactly the size of a laptop full-size keyboard, nor do you get that much travel, but it's not that far different. Actual metal here feels a little cold to the touch, and we do have some shortcut keys here for multimedia, the home button for iPad functions, brightness control, that sort of thing. So not bad at all as a keyboard goes. Now let's take a look at this and see the angle and the stability of it. Because this connects to the magnetic data connector right over here. It has to be mated on here and it does pull itself right into place to do that. So you can't use this at an infinite number of angles because it has to make that connection. So here's your one typing angle. So it, compared to laptops or even Surface Pro 4, the variable kickstand, that can be a bit limiting. I mean, it's a pretty comfortable, decent angle if you're using it on a table, that's nice. But if you're using it on your lap, if you're using it on the bed, maybe not so much. It's also a kind of, you know, it, this is, fabric with nice rigid plastic underneath. So it's not that this isn't well made, it is, but inherent to this kind of design, you got something that's floppy. It's floppy enough that it, if you're on the bus or so, something like that, it's going to be going boing, -a boing, -a boing, -a boing. You get the idea. Certainly better than nothing and certainly a way to turn this into a laptop though. Another nice thing about the Logitech keyboard, unlike the Apple keyboard, is the keys are backlit. And these days, I mean, I've become very accustomed to having that on my laptop, and I really do like that because using this in front of the TV at night or in bed or anything like that, well, you can actually see the keys. That's a good thing. One thing to note about the keyboard case, the keyboard case weighs one pound, 10 ounces. So it's called about 1.6 pounds. That's actually also what our tablet weighs here. So we're, we're pushing three and a quarter to three and a half 
pounds when you put these together. That is the same weight as your average 13.3 inch ultra book right there. So it is not really going to be any lighter. And as we bring it here with our 13 and a half inch surface book, which is, oh boy, together these are over six pounds, uh, which is a little bigger than some 13.3 inch models. You can see this is about the same size as a surface book as a kit. And when you got it in the case, the thickness is similar too. Of course, you are protecting this with the case. Surface book is buck naked. Bluetooth 4.2 is standard, so is Wi-Fi 802.11ac dual band. GPS, you only get the GPS with GLONASS on the Wi-Fi plus LTE models, which is typical of Apple and their iPads. Camera, the same camera from the iPad Air 2. Basically, you got an 8 megapixel rear camera, a 1.2 megapixel FaceTime camera, so nothing really has changed there. Battery is 30. 8.5 watt hour. That's a pretty big battery for a tablet, but let's face it, this is a pretty big tablet. There's a lot of room for a battery. Comes with a 12 watt iPad, typical white charger. Apple claims 10 hours of battery life for the Wi-Fi only model, which is the one we have here, nine hours for the Wi-Fi plus LTE model. And as usual for Apple, they are not being optimistic. They are on target there. That's what it's been doing for us. So that's, that certainly speaks in favor of it compared to many laptops that don't last that long, though Apple's own laptops, including the MacBook Air, can manage 10 hours too. So it really, <laughs> that's an interesting premise there because Apple's already given that. Now, it's funny, in the, in the old days, Steve Jobs said, you know, you, you should never ergonomically have to reach across your keyboard to touch the screen. Well, guess what? Tim Cook has a different opinion, apparently, because notice there's no trackpad here. I don't believe that data connector transmits any data that would be useful for that. Apple's keyboard case does not have a trackpad either. So you will indeed be either penciling or fingering to reach over here to do things because it's a touch optimized operating system. It is not designed to really be that easy to navigate with a keyboard, honestly. Funny that, isn't it? So gaming, obviously this is the fastest iPad yet. You got this nice big screen. You got enough room to have controls kind of out of the way of the view here. Potentially, if developers start to even taking advantage of this, it could be even better gaming experience, but it's very fast. This is Deus, Deus Ex that we have running here, which is a graphically beautiful game. And even though this is not really even updated for the new iPad Pro, and this is really iPad Air optimized, the graphics look stunning on this. And, and iOS has a lot of high quality games, so they should all look quite nice on this. And that gets into the ecosystem. A lot of mobile apps available, obviously high quality apps for the iPad in particular are available. And when you look at something like the Galaxy Note, which is a fine Android tablet with an S Pen, Active Pen also, the the number of tablet optimized apps for Android is still not really that strong. And I think that's always held the Galaxy Note line of tablets back a bit. So Apple won't have that problem here. It's really going to be your choice between whether you need a full computer and the applications that are available, or if you can make do with mobile versions of applications. Honestly, I think that any Art professional would love to have this as something as an accessory to their their usual work setup, but this doesn't have full Photoshop. This doesn't have all the tools that are available certainly to do real work on a real computer, to put it the cliche way. But as an accessory, something you can take away and do drawing and sketching on, get some of your work done. It certainly works there. If you're doing something like Word and Excel or Apple's counterparts to those, your choice. Office is available on it. It can certainly do the job just fine. Word and Excel on this are very good, so are PowerPoint. So for people who do very basic stuff, just, just MS Office, email, social networking, you know, occasional for fun, editing movies and iMovie and a little photo editing, then it'll do the job fine. It's still not a replacement for a PC or a Mac. So that's Apple's iPad Pro. Now, you know me, I like Apple products. I do own an iPad Mini 4, for example. Obviously, there's an Apple Watch on my wrist right here. Of course, I love Android. I love Windows. I like them all, but I like tablets a lot. As you know, I like Surface Pro 4. I like the Galaxy Note. I, I would love to see this make more sense. For me personally, it doesn't so much, but I know for some of you it will. Those of you who've been using the regular iPad Air too as a laptop replacement, but you just wanted a bigger screen, maybe you find the pencil handy, you're going to like this probably more because it's going to give you all that. But the ergonomic trade-offs are difficult. This thing becomes a big, heavy product to manipulate. And when you put it in the keyboard case, a big floppy, not very stable, not multiple angles to tilt kind of product, 
And so as a laptop stand-in, it's uh, I find a little bit weak ergonomically just for those reasons right there. Obviously, you can't run desktop apps. You can't run OS X apps. You have Certainly, you can't run Windows apps. And the mobile apps on this are great fun. They're wonderful for touch. They're good for what they can do, but they're still not up to desktop performance. So as a $1,000 product plus, when you throw in those accessories when they're available, personally, I'm not feeling it all that much. Sorry, folks. I know some of you wanted me to absolutely love this, but it's not that it's a bad product. It's just a product at this price and at this size and with mobile applications only that I think, at best, it's a little bit ahead of its time. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website for the full written review and subscribe to our YouTube channel.